Hey everyone, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I'm uh, still a late making video about Kipper, Nika Kippersoff, and the fact that his number 34 got retired by the Calgary Flames. So what I have here actually is the only parts of my jersey collection that I have anything with Kipper is I did buy a, well this is a medium, I bought more as a collector, the Harris Classic jersey with uh, Kipper Soft on the back. Best resembling supposedly the uh, 1920s Calgary Tigers that went to the uh, Stanley Cup in 1924 against the Montreal Canadiens. I was at that game when Calgary won the Hordies and won 4 nothing at McMahon Stadium with Kipper and Nick with the first outdoor shot at the time. So I'll just put it up here for the sake of this video. Seems appropriate talking about Jersey Tyrant. And a colleague at work. I know at the at the game got these aluminum cups. So yeah, if you can make it out of the camera, this actually is an aluminum cup. You know, I got Kipper on there, Jersey Retirement. March 2nd, 2024, exactly five years when we retired Jerome McGinley's jersey and Kipper been aflame for 10 years and rotated around. And this is the cup right here, so I'll just hang on to that. So all that aside, it's definitely a well-deserved honor. The Calgary Flames I got around to uh, retiring Mika Kiprasov's number 34 and he's only the fourth player in franchise history to officially have his number retired. First player was Lane McDonald, retired as number nine immediately after he retired and after the 89 season. It happened in 1990 so his number nine got retired first and it wasn't until 2007, in February, where the Calgary Flames got around to retiring their second number, which was, you get up debate, who's the best goalie the Calgary Flames have ever had? I mean, the first goalie you could say the Flames had that was a stud goalie was Mike Vernon. And actually, Mike Vernon also recently got inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame this past year and for the 2023 class. So Mike Vernon was the second player to get it. his number retired. And then the Flames kind of pivoted a little where they didn't officially retire their numbers. You could debate it should be retired when they did their Forever Flame program where they honored both number two of Al McInnes and number 25 of Joe Neuendijk. I think that happened around 2011, 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Shortly after when those players got inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame, she also mentioned Lyle McDonald got inducted in the Hall of Key Hall of Fame first ballot in 1992, three years after he retired from the Flames. And then, as I mentioned on the Cup, immediately after when Terrell McGillan retired, officially announced retirement summer of 2018 that the Flames retired as number 12 in March of 2019. And then Ed Kipper is now the fourth player to officially have his number 34 retired by the Calgary Flames. And I'm going to say it is definitely an honor. Who do you think is the best goalie the Flames have ever had? Was it Mike Vernon? I mean, you can almost kind of compare different errors. I mean, Mike Vernon yeah, won us the Stanley Cup in 1989. There was an era where there was more offense. I didn't make a Kepris off. You can arguably say he won the Cup in 2004 for a few different moments. But also the fact that he is the only Flame to date to win the Vesna Trophy in 2006. But the other thing you're always going to remember with Mika Kirbsoff, not only with his 
great saves and how many games he was able to play for the Harry Flames and all the wins he piled up was the fact that uh, you got to question his personality. Because you never heard much from uh, Mika Kerpersoff in the media during his play days. I and mean, we had Jerome McGinley, Craig Conroy for much of the time hogging up all the attention and everybody else. And I think Kepper was really thankful for that. However, when he did come back to Calgary for his retirement ceremony, I'm going to say I was quite impressed with the speech he uh, came up with. I would say, said with the help of his kids, and also Kiprasov was not the only name to play in the NHL. He actually had a brother named Marco. Kiprasov was just a stay at home during the defense, and then he played for the Montreal Canadiens, New York Honors, but spent most of his career over in Europe, so you could say Kipper had the uh, better career in the NHL by far. But uh, it's definitely an unique honor to have your number retired by a franchise, and the Flames still seem to uh, be a little slow at it and not too sure who you think will be next to get their number retired. By the Flames anytime soon. I mean, you'd say the biggest memories I have of Kiprasov with his number and his playing career obviously is when he first came here in the 2003 4 season. We didn't have, you know, healthy goalies at the time. Roman Turk was hurt and Jamie Clinton was literally playing on one leg and sounds they had too many goalies and they had again to back off and Vasatoskala went out the back of John Demick Kerso. So he didn't play at all that season until he got traded here and immediately when he came here he took off and uh, got this team in the playoffs and went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals and he also close against the Tampa Bay Lightning. But the proof that wasn't a fluke was the following season when he won the Vesna. And of course I'm going to still say that 2004 run and being at that Heritage Classic, watching him with that shutout with the uh, over the Montreal Canadiens being outside in the cold at McMahon Stadium. And it's definitely was different to be at McMahon, a place that you always go to to watch a football game, suddenly being transformed to a hockey game. So I was fortunate enough to uh, watch that. And then the fact that uh, you could probably say with the presentation that they gave with Mika Kerbersoff, that he probably is the last goalie to be playing, you know, 70 plus games and seven straight seasons. Interesting, I'm also making this video shortly after uh, when Martin Berdera kind of blew something out saying that goaltenders are babied too much because a goaltender like Martin Berdera was also another stud, one of the best goalies of all time to play, you know, 70 plus games a year. I think now with the just how the game has changed, more press schedule, and now a salary cap, that you need to have two goalies to spill each other off. And also the fact that what happens if your stud goalie gets injured and you're left with big backup. That's why we had big backup here, you know, with Gene Clinton, Curtis McElhinney, Joey McDonald. But, uh, you could say the fraternity of the goalies. For the Flames, I mean, we started off with Reggie Lemlin, Mike Vernon, and after we moved on from Mike Vernon to be, you know, because of the salary disparity, we had Trevor Kidd for a few years. Then we had a combination of Dwayne Rolison and Rick Tabaracci. And then the 1998-99 season, it seemed like that was a rough year to be a goalie because everybody was getting hurt. I mean, heck, we had Grant Fear. Ken Reggett. Well, actually, Grant Fear was 99 2000, but we had the uh, the Fred Brathwaite cake craze briefly, and then we traded him for Roman Turek, and then it was between Turek and uh, McLennan, but then it was Kiprasov that gave us that stability for a decade, and then after he retired, we haven't had much stability until we had uh, Jacob Markstrom and Ian Danavar, and 
Looks to be Destin Wolf is going to be the future because between Kiprasov and Marstrom, we had uh, Corey Ramo, you know, Jonas Hiller, Chad Johnson, and then we tried with Brian Elliott, Mike Smith. So you'd say we were definitely fortunate enough to have a goaltender that played uh, a whole decade with the Calgary Flames. Is, is he a Hall of Famer? Will he be in the Hockey Hall of Fame? Because he is in the Finnish Hall of Fame. So I have the this color set, blue and white. Because we're talking about a, a Finnish legend. Here after all, played for Finland on a few occasions internationally. But uh, I still say Canada is the top goalie, top country for hockey. I'm going to say overall, and, and Kiprasov. I always fell short to Canada I mean, the World Cup in 2004 against Canada and then he won the bronze in 2010 in Vancouver for the Olympics. I remember he had a bad game in the uh, semifinals and then bounced back with the bronze medal win. That was the other thing with Kipper too is that uh, never, never seemed to be phased. If he had a bad game he knew he was going to bounce back with a Solid game the next day, which is another factor why he played so many games, plus we had no other goalie to have faith in him. But the speech, I mean, he hardly said any words when he got inducted into the Finnish Hockey Hall of Fame. And then afterwards, Ron McGinley had his number retired. I mean, he singled out Rob McGuire, Mika Gripsoff, and Craig Conroy in terms of the players that he played with the longest, but... Uh, thing with Kiprasov was he always played here and then when the season was over, whenever that is, he always somehow snuck out the back door and he must have had an express car that took him right down to the tarmac at YYC to fly home to Finland. He's from Turku, Finland. I know Helsinki as well. And then he just goes fishing in the fjords until it's time to uh, come back for regular season and does this thing again and kept doing it till 2013 and there was many people that joked to say if the Flames ever decide to retire his number he probably wouldn't show up to his own ceremony but my opinion changed on that when he made a surprise appearance to a Flames game in 2019 that he was just at the game and he was there and I thought maybe they did finally retire his number he would uh, show up, and he did, and I just liked how he had a speech where he acknowledged, I mean, the other thing with Kippers, he did all the work in that, but he uh, he deflected that off himself, and say he was a team guy, he thanked all of his defensemen, and you could say that when he was here for a lot of his career, we had guys like Ron McGuire, Rhett Warner, we had Jay Bomeister, Roman Hammerlick. We had like great defensemen that played in front of uh, Mika Kiprasov over the years, although we seemed to struggle to score goals at times. But uh, he thanked uh, Rob Gear, Rick Warner. I was at the ceremony, and of course, he always had to thank Craig Connery. Those were like the faces of the team. And then he acknowledged, like how he acknowledged all the players that he was going to be up in the Raptors with, you know, with Jerome McGinley, all the times that he. Play together, and interestingly, you may not realize Mika Kiprasov and Mike Vernon, they sort of kind of played a small role in each other's career because Mike Vernon did play with the San Jose Sharks. After he led the Red Wings to the Stanley Cup and won the Consumite in 1997, because they wanted to move on, have Kevin Hudson with Chris Osgood, and then Mika Kiprasov, he was still a young goalie making his way in the NHL with the Sharks, because that's where he came from. So it was interesting that both Calgary Flame legend goalies kind of rubbed off each other when Vernon was already the established veteran legend. And Mika Kirbasov definitely haven't made his name for himself yet. And he showed a few flashes in the band with uh, San Jose. And then came back to the also knowledge Lane McDonald and Unfortunately, he was not available at that time with his health scare, but he's doing better now. 
sure Lang and Dalton each except saw, saw each other a lot during various events and just how the how the presentation of all the kids inspired to be a goalie now thanks to Kipper. I mean I can almost say I still say Dominic Kosick is the uh, best goalie that I think uh, I've seen play in the NHL. That's an era that you know I got to watch Patrick Waugh and Martin Berger. But I'm gonna say in terms of just you know doing whatever it takes to keep the puck out of the net. I mean Dominic Kosick he did he did that beyond. I'm gonna say Mika Kerbasov was a kind of a light version of Don Nikosik in terms of how he just did whatever it took to uh, get the puck, keep it out of the net with his unorthodox saves, you know, the scorpion. And then he always had that long stick save that he's done. I mean, I think if I said his name right, I looked, I recently watched his name is uh, Abraham Water. It's called a basketball fan react. It's a reaction video, but he actually does provide value. Yeah, he watches the video of a Mika Kerbasov montage, but he also, you know, gives amazing reactions. And sometimes you just have to laugh at his reaction on how Kerbasov made that save. And he was like, "How did he save that?" Well, of course, after I watched that video, he did actually react to uh, Don Nikosik. So I'm gonna say we definitely were lucky to have a goalie like. Mika Kerbasov, and then all the uh, alumni that came out. I mean, Al Coates was at Jerome McGinley's uh, retirement ceremony because it was general manager Al Coates that uh, traded him. Well, interesting, Daryl was there. And actually, he got ovation. And obviously, thanks to Daryl at the time, because he was the first-time head coach and general manager of the Calgary Flames, he knew. He had some insight on Kipper because he was in San Jose when he had Kipper at the time. But San Jose had Hagen Nabokov and Vasco Toskala. Yeah, it was Ron Wilson that was the next coach for the San Jose Sharks that uh, brought him in and decided that Toskala was ahead of Kipper. And Kipper didn't play at all that season until he came here. He was waiting to get traded. And you could say it was somewhat symbolic that... Uh, after when we won that series against Vancouver in that emotional series with the Canucks and then we upset the Detroit Ramings and played the Sharks. It was almost fitting that it was uh, Kerbasov coming back and kind of showing off the Sharks saying, hmm, I think you made a mistake and that's okay. But San Jose, that second round pick they got for uh, turning Kipper to us was Mark Evan Vlasic, and he's played over a thousand games all at the San Jose Sharks. Maybe some could say the contract's not good now at this stage of his career. But the fact that uh, they didn't necessarily got shafted or a rock. I mean, we still won the deal because you got a Kipper, Kipper's off here for a decade and had a stud number goalie for a decade. And I'm going to say between Kipper's retirement and Getting Jacob Markstrom, we didn't have a stud number goalie for seven years, and now we're, I think we're in transition again at the end of the 2023-24 season. That uh, There's rumors that uh, apparently we'll be moving on from Jacob Markstrom with Dan Bedard. Well, he needs to get hip surgery, and he still proves he can be a good goalie, but uh, will he be label as damaged goods right now because of the injury. And then we have Dustin Wolf coming up in the system that uh, I think he's ready for prime time. But it's all this, you know, talk about Mika Kerbasov. Quite a career. What a unique honor. Do you think a couple things I'll ask in this video is, is Mika Kerbasov a Hockey Hall of Famer? Will he eventually get the call to go to Toronto for a weekend to have his plaque forever enshrined, just like let's say this past season, Mike Vernon, as well as Tom Barrasso. He was debated for a long time about uh, getting the Hockey Hall of Fame combination of his personality and just thinking, well, he was 
He just happened to be the goalie on the Penguins when they had Lemieux and Yager. Early career, I mean, Henrik Lundqvist was a slam dunk. Hall of Famer has a sleeve. But, uh, and I kept thinking for years that uh, Mike Vernon definitely deserved to be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. And thankfully he is. I mean, easy to say that. We still had a kind of a love-hate relationship with him at times here in Calgary. But he did win the Cup. And he won another Cup, and a Conn Smythe. He was the goalie that ended the long, I think it was 44-year drought for the Red Wings at the time, and it was Scotty Bowman that proved him right that Mike Vernon was the goalie he was going to go with in the playoffs that year. So that's where I think his career got cemented right there. And yeah, he tailed off to the end. Same with Mika Kerbersoff, but uh, he definitely got the honor here in Calgary for sure. You could probably say, you could say he's slightly better than Mike Vernon, but you can't really compare eras. Vernon won the cup. Uh, Kipper won the Vesna, but uh, it was Kipper that uh, finally, you know, in some way got the franchise back on the right footing with that uh, run to the Stanley Cup final and had a stuck goalie. He uh, definitely only went to one All Star game, but uh, he wasn't really interested in all that extra stuff. And then the other question I ask is. Who's the next number that the Calgary Flames should retire? I think it's going to be a long time before you're going to see another number being retired by the Calgary Flames. Because who is on the Flames right now that you're going to say at this stage? I mean, a lot could still happen, you know, 10, 20 years from now with certain players. I don't see anyone on the Flames right now that I'm going to say, ah, uh, he's going to get his number retired someday down the road. The only argument you can make is maybe Mark Giordano because he uh, played his, most of his career with the Calgary Flames. He's up there and, you know, games played and uh, points as a defenseman and the up-to-date the first and only defenseman for the Calgary Flames to win the Norris Trophy. So maybe. I mean, some could say Michael Backlund. Well, assuming he keeps staying healthy and plays out the next two years of his extension of the Flames, he'll be the second player, only behind Jerome McGill, to play over a thousand games, all with the Calgary Flames. But I would say he would be more of that forever a Flame category. Someone that <clears throat> you can honor the player but not necessarily retire the number. I mean, there's a bunch of players that you can uh, you can do that as well. You know, could you put a Rob McGear or could we acknowledge, let's say, you know, Doug Gilmore or Joey Mullen? They play big roles with the Flames or the history. I know this is an extremely, extremely, extremely controversial, but why isn't there in flurry? Why isn't his number officially retired by the Calgary Flames? You could say all this stuff off the ice and just how he presents himself. And some could say maybe he burned bridges with the uh, Flames. No pun intended. Because you know, his third flurry was not at the uh, ceremony for Jerome McGinley or third flurry. And Let's just say the Flames decide to retire Theron Fleury's number. I'm sure they'll want Fleury to be at that ceremony. He'll definitely, I think the stone, the dome will still uh, get blown off if it's yours. But what kind of speech will Theron Fleury give? Or they could, you know, maybe still retire his number without being there. Because no one has worn number 14 since Fleury got traded to Colorado and uh, other than that brief comeback where he wore that number. No one's worn it again and I don't think anyone's going to wear it ever again. But I also say he should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame as well. Hopefully that will eventually happen. I say it's definitely well well deserved. But it's controversial and I mean we all have our rights to our freedom of speech and 
Yeah, stuff happened to him earlier in his uh, childhood that were factors, but that's the only other obvious choice, but it'd be controversial. But I think it's going to be a long time before we're going to see that, given how, I mean, it should be a rare honor, and I mean, some teams like the Montreal Canadiens and Boston Bruins are going to start running out of players to uh, give numbers to if you retire all your greats, but uh, that's all they have for Kipper. He definitely deserves the uh, honor and definitely heard a lot more from him and probably knew more about his personality in the week that he was honored. And he was glad to come back to Calgary. He was stunned that when he first came here that uh, he really accused all the attention he got. I mean, he got a goalie that Daryl knew someone something about. We needed a goalie, and he just he filled the net and beyond that. Uh, on the Sea of Red, got revived. The franchise got revived, and uh, you know it was definitely great for what he did for the Flames. And just got to say thanks, Kipper, for the memories and all he done in the NHL, especially with the Calgary Flames and. Well deserved, and I was impressed by your speech. I had that TikTok that I joked and saved to say, "Thank you, Calgary Flames, for honor." Now I'll go back to Finland, go fishing, and, and wave goodbye. He did a little more than that. And that's all I gotta say. Still, Jamie McLennan said more words than Kipper, but I still think he said more words than he did. But uh, that's all I gotta say. So to close it out, if you want to follow along this Calgary Sports Fans journey, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I have I sell my other social links down in the description below. And so I say thanks, Kipper. Go Flames Go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.